Greetings fellow ARCs! Welcome to Maria Academy. My name is Azalira, and today we'll be talking about PSO2's 6th anniversary, and why it's probably the best time for you to return to the game if you ever planned on it in the first place. Or not, that's on you. With how anniversaries work in PSO2, Sega would always release a new limited quest in which we can farm our butts on. Literally. But jokes aside, we're going to have two parts of the limited quest this year. So with Arc Milan, currently, there is the Sky Park that is active right now. The Sky Park of Arc Milan features Apostolo Dragon, which drops Zirenheit's NT, a 14-star jet boot. While after July 11th, we're going to get the second part, the Sand Park, which features Aprazina and drops the Apprentice Grudge NT, a pair of twin daggers. Upon hearing about 14-star drops in general, anyone would have had a reaction of <laughs> And by that I mean, damn, you must be really lucky to get one. But fear not, this is why this anniversary is so great. When you clear Ark Merlin, which is an 8 minute quest, I'm going to use Sky Park's Extra Hard difficulty as an example. When you clear Extra Hard, you will by default get 15 badges. This is not including drops. So if we're taking into account your 250% rare drop boosters and so on, you'd probably get an average of 22 to 25 badges per single run. And what do you do with these badges? You go trade them at Z, the seasonal and anniversary badge shop NPC. The first thing you might notice in the bad shop is all these wonderful tickets, because we all know that fashion is the true endgame of PSO2. Although that's not exactly what we're talking about today. What we're looking at is if you scroll down below, you're going to see a ton of Homura weapons. Homura being the new 13 star series introduced by trading 100 badges. Yes, I've said it. You trade 100 badges for a 30 grind cap copy of a Homura series weapon of your choice. In other words, you only need 6 copies aka 600 badges to get a plus 35 weapon so you can also get your level 75 captain locked, assuming you have not done so yet. Now, remember what I said earlier, each run takes around 8 minutes, excluding the time that you have to pick up your drops. But assuming that you do all of that in 8 minutes and you get 22 to 25 badge drops per run, what happens here is, if you basically farm for around 2.5 hours to 3 hours, you will get 600 badges that you can already trade for a plus 35 weapon in just one day of gameplay. Considering in the past, getting a plus 35 weapon has to take a really long time, because all you can do is pray to RNG for drops, or get weapons from the collection file. But no, not this time, because considering how easy it is to get everything, you're going to be up to date in no time. Does that sound appealing enough to you? No? Alright, let's add some more icing to the cake. Currently, Z has three kind orders that you can complete. And upon completing the third one, once per account, you can get a ticket to trade in for a plus 30 grinded homra of your choice, which means that you don't have to waste all that effort to grind from 1 to 30 on your own. So this is perfect for any returning players or anyone who wants to catch up in power. But remember, you can only trade this once per account, so the other Homura weapons that you do plan to get will have to be through the grinding method. Now here's a personal recommendation from me. For the Homura series specifically, I do not recommend that you trade in your badges for the Homura series weapons, just because the fact that it can still drop in Arkma land while you're still farming for those badges. So just keep your badges until you have 600, and then trade in the Homura all at once, so you don't waste anything. With all that, everything should have already sound super awesome, isn't it? But you know what? Let's take it to the next level. You might have realized while scrolling around Z's shop, there are these stones called the Vesta Stones, which are also tradable with 100 badges, just like the Homura weapons. And I will tell you right now, these stones are hella worth it. The Homura series, once you upgraded to plus 35 and grinded, you can take it over to Zeeg. Not to be confused with Z, you know, Zeeg, the robot, yeah, yeah, alright. You can take them to Zeeg, and you might realize that there's actually a button that says Homura series upgrade. So your answer is yes, the Homura series from 13 star is upgradable to 14 stars. 
The upgrade comes in two forms, first being the Gurren series, and secondly is the Xi'an series. And all you need to upgrade the Homura to a Gurren or a Xi'an is just 9 stones from the shop, so that is 900 badges. Which concludes overall, if you do want a 14 star weapon, all you need to do is get 1500 badges or 1500 badges total for a plus 35 Homura weapon and the 9 Vesta stones in order to upgrade them to 14 stars. Before anyone starts poking me with messages such as like, Hey Azel, what the hell man, why do we want to trade in 14 stars? Can't we just use Conqueror's Crest to trade in for like a Kazami or something? That's gonna be so much better, right? The answer is none other than yes, you can definitely trade in 500 crests for your 14 star exchange at Zeke, and I will do admit that most of those 14 stars definitely do win in gimmick, as well as the utility aspects. However, don't underestimate the potential of damage that can come from the Xi'an series specifically, and I will explain exactly why. Looking specifically into the Gurren and Xi'an series, at a glance you might think that why would you ever get Xi'an when Gurren has higher base stats? The reason that Xi'an is superior in this front is the fact that the Xi'an series do have S-Class Special Ability slots, or the SSAs in short, that the Gurren series do not have, but I will expand on that in a little bit. First, let's look at these two weapons' potentials. First of all, the Gurren series. The Gurren series has a plus 13% flat damage increase, and you get an extra 5% while you hit the enemy's weak element. What this means is, you're already doing plus 13% flat damage, however, if your weapon is light element, and you're hitting an enemy that's weak to light, like Darkers, you're going to do a 5% additional damage to it. Which is significant, considering that the weak damage is actually multiplicative instead of additive to your already high flat damage. And also an additional effect to that is, the Gurren series also automatically casts Shifter on you once every 15 seconds or so. So that is one added utility, which is really nice. Now on to the Xi'an series. The Xi'an series is basically the opposite of the Gurren series. The Xi'an series has 5% damage flat at base, however, there is 13% additional damage while you're hitting the enemy's weak element. In addition, you also get a D-band buff once every 15 seconds or so. To compare these two series side by side, I will use an example of the bullet bow. In this case, the Guren no Senka to the left and the Shien no Senka to the right. If you look in raw stats alone, you can easily say that the Guren does beat the Shien by 74R attack, which results in an estimated of 2-3% flat damage. And considering that Guren has a more all-rounder potential, the Guren has to be better, right? But no. The SSA slots, which I mentioned earlier, will come into effect here. While I will not go too in-depth into the SSA slots abilities, I will show you a quick rundown of how monstrous you can make the Xian become. Assuming you add the S1 Flowing Intent, which is a 4% damage SSA, and then the S3 Skill Strike, which is a 4% crit damage SSA, assuming that you do critical hits on the Xian, you will actually do 8% more flat damage by just only having these two SSA slots. This means that the Xian now has 8% extra damage, which adds to the flat damage, meaning the Xian now has 13% flat damage, which is equal to the Gurren, and still has 8% more damage assuming you can match the enemy's weak element. And this is the reason why the Xian series can actually outdo the Gurren by quite a margin because assuming you're matching element, adding the 13% flat damage and then another 13% when you're hitting the enemy's weak element, and considering that these multipliers are multiplicative, you can do an extra whooping 28.3% damage and your enemy goes KABOOM! Assuming you do match the enemy's weak element, of course. So with this in mind, this means that Xian is absurdly good for Rod, Talus, Wan, and Jet Boots respectively because all those weapons, you can choose whatever element you want. For Rod and Taluses, you have such a wide selection of techs that you can always use to hit the enemy's weak elements. For Wan, there's the ring that allows you to change your Wan Gear's element, 
And for jet boots, the jet boot gear also changes elements, simply by casting techs of each respective element. So I would recommend specifically these four weapons if you are going for a Xi'an at all as a priority. But if you don't, it's okay, it's still worth it. So how does everything sound? Does all this catch your interest to run Arkham Land during PSO2's 6 year anniversary? Because I know what I'm gonna definitely be doing in the next few weeks. Get my Xi'ans ready, and get ready for the Omega Apprentice raid boss coming in summer. If you plan in to trade for a Xi'an series, tell me in the comments below what kind of Xi'an you're trading for and why. Or you can also tell me how you feel about this whole Arkham Land in the 6th anniversary. But other than that, Hope everyone is enjoying the 6th anniversary of Fantasy Star Online 2, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, and don't forget to smile, alright?